All right, how's it going guys? Johnny Rocket here. We are in a special place today. We're in where it all began for me. We're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in my backyard pool where I taught my first swim lessons. In this video, we're going to talk about the freestyle stroke. What is the freestyle stroke? What is freestyle swimming? Freestyle originated as the Australian crawl. It was invented in Australia as a more efficient way to swim than breaststroke. Eventually it changed into the front crawl and now we call it freestyle. The modern term today is freestyle. The competitive swimming term is freestyle. Technically in a freestyle swimming event, you're allowed to dive in and swim any stroke you want if you're doing freestyle, but it has to remain the same stroke for the whole race. So let's say you had a 100 freestyle race and you dove in and swam at butterfly, you'd have to keep swimming at butterfly for the whole race. But that's what the word freestyle means. It gives you the freedom to do whatever stroke you want, so long as you stay on the same stroke for the entire race. Like every stroke, freestyle has three components to it. The first component is the head position or the breath. The second component are the arms. And the third component is the legs or the kick. So you have the head position, the pull, and the kick. When you breathe in freestyle, it's the only stroke where you breathe to the side instead of in front of you. When you swim breaststroke, you breathe in front of you. Butterfly, you breathe in front of you. Backstroke, you're not holding your breath. Freestyle is the only stroke where you take it to the side. But that is actually a more efficient way to take your breath. Because when you breathe to the side, your body can stay in line with itself. Your spine stays in line with the rest of your body line. And you can stay swimming forwards and more hydrodynamically. As opposed to butterfly and breaststroke, when you lift your head up to breathe, your body line halts. When breathing in freestyle, I recommend you breathe to the side and slightly behind you. Too many swimmers breathe to the side and slightly in front of them, or they'll lift their ear up. I don't want to be able to see your ear from the other side of the pool. Keep that ear in the water on your shoulder, maybe one goggle in, one goggle out. Breathe to the side and slightly behind you. When swimmers breathe slightly in front of them, I've found that their body line dips and then they have a hard time getting started again. You also get your mouth way closer to the surface of the water when you try to breathe forward. If you're back here, your chin is technically popping farther out away from the water. It's a much more effective breath. Start your breath when you start the pull. Pretend like your hand and your nose are connected by a string. When the pull starts, the breath starts so that you've got your breath by time that arm comes back around. Too many people pull and then lift their face and their hand out of the water at the same time and then they're like, ah, I'm struggling, I can't get the breath in time, right? And they feel stuck or they get water in their mouth and that's uncomfortable for them. Start your breath when you start the pull. The other thing I recommend is blowing out your air before you turn to the side to breathe. It can be a steady bubble stream or it can be one final burst where you let out all the air as you're turning to the side. But if you're blowing out, when you turn to the side, all you have to do now is breathe in, just the inhale. It's half the breath. It cuts the breath time in half. So now instead of exhaling and inhaling before that arm comes crashing down, all you have to do is inhale. Finally, when it comes to the breath, I also recommend that you breathe every two strokes. Too many coaches out there, I think, teach breathing threes and that's because when we teach kids to breathe threes we're trying to get them used to breathing onto both sides so that someday when they find their favorite side it's not biased from the very beginning you also they have a hard time balancing themselves in the water so by breathing threes we ha keep their body working equally on both sides balanced in the water but as an adult you need more oxygen in your muscles your muscles have now grown much bigger and they require much more oxygen to keep firing properly. Otherwise you get that burning feeling in your, in your muscles or a lot of you guys have felt where you, you finish one length of the pool and you're like, I am exhausted. And you're like, I don't know why though, I'm a triathlete, I bike all the time, I run all the time, I used to be in the military, I'm a football player. What is the problem? Why am I so exhausted after just one length of swimming? It's because you're holding your breath too much. You wouldn't hold your breath when you weight lift or bike or run. You wouldn't hold your breath at the grocery store. Why would you hold your breath when you swim? Well, because you can't breathe underwater. I understand that, but why not breathing every two strokes? I'm never holding my breath now. I'm inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. 
that's a much more efficient way to swim. Makes you be able to last longer. If you want to watch the milers or the ocean swimmers, people who swim the longest distances in the Olympics, the longest races, they are all breathing every two strokes. The pole is the second component to the freestyle stroke. When you swim freestyle, I like to teach swimmers to swim like a superhero. You want both hands in this position out in front of you. One pole starts while the other remains at the, at the top, and then the other pole takes its turn from the original place. The reason I call it like superhero swimming, hopefully is obvious, you look like you're a superhero kind of flying through the water, but this is better and in contrast to pocket freestyle. What most swimmers do is they'll swim from back here with their head leading the way and they're super imbalanced. Front quadrant swimming is the key. It's the way to go, keeping your body balanced. You need this front quadrant out here balancing your body in the water so you don't start dipping backwards or getting out of control with no balance. Keep your balance by keeping your arms out in front. Think of it as like when you go out in, into a float, if you've ever been asked to float on your belly, or if you've ever tried to float on your belly on your own, the first thing you probably did was you leaned forward with your arms out in front. You probably didn't just tip over with your arms by your side, right? Your, your body naturally, instinctually knew to put your arms out in front. Well, you're gonna swim like that too. Plus it's more hydrodynamic to have hands leading the way rather than your head. Each pull, you want a high elbow catch or an early vertical forearm. What that means is fingertips down, elbow remains high. This is a more effective catch rather than your elbow dropping behind and, and leading the pull back through. You want to get your fingertips almost underneath your elbow and pull through like that. Catch more water with this kind of a paddle. So it takes time and it takes practice. The arms have two components, the pull and the recovery. The pull is where the magic happens. That's where you're pro progressing through the water creating momentum. The recovery part of the stroke needs to be just that. It needs to be recovery. Too many people are throwing their hands into the water from above the surface as if that's pushing them forward. It's not. You're just wasting energy and you're throwing energy into the wrong places. Your hand should just rest out in front while the other arm now is focusing on the pull because that's how you move forwards faster. Recovery, pull. Recovery, pull. When your pole goes to the back of your, your body, it should be flexed. Your hand should flex as you push through the back of your pole. Too many people are pulling straight up like this, flipping water up into the air, but all that's doing is pushing you down. The great Dave Thomas, uh, swim coach for USA Swimming, he likes to say that you're always swimming in the direction of the back of your hand. And I like that. That means that wherever your palm is facing, Hopefully it's directly backwards as you pull. When it's up here, it doesn't really matter if you're a straight arm recovery person, middle, or you keep your hand close to yours. It usually depends on your shoulder makeup and, and your uh, body's anatomy and how flexible your arms are. Some people can't bring it in this close. I'm one of those people. My arm typically kind of stays in that middle zone because I'm not really flexible enough to keep it this close. I'm also not a straight arm recovery person, just never have been. The last component of freestyle is the kick, or the legs. The kick is a little bit of a bigger flutter kick than what you would do on backstroke. Both are flutter kicks, but one is a little bit bigger than the other, and that's freestyle. The bigger kick kind of gives you control. Now most people either kick with their legs too straight, because that's what some coaches out there telling them, and some people bend their knees up uh, so much that their heels are coming up and kicking them in the rear end. Neither of those are what you want. You want your feet to kind of just drift behind you. You don't want to control it very much. You just want them to flutter and do their thing behind you. As you get stronger and more stable in the water, you can start to get it bigger. But for now, just let your feet dangle behind you. Let them do their thing. They're going to dance like, like jellyfish. Just let them do their thing very light fluttering. One of the common mistakes I see in beginners though is when they turn their head to the side to breathe, they'll stop kicking. Make sure you kick through the breath. You want to accelerate through the breath because when you turn your head to the side to breathe, your body's thrown out of balance just a little bit. So the stronger kick allows you to maintain the balance through the breath so you don't end up sinking during your breath. Keep kicking to keep you up. It's the same concept with whitewater rafting. They say when you start to go through the, the, the rough waves, you're supposed to paddle harder, paddle harder to keep the boat moving forward. Your body is the same way. When you turn your head to the side, it's like you're encountering rough water. 
So kick stronger through the breath. If you're looking for that smooth, graceful freestyle technique, then your idea that you should be focusing on is a skating technique, kind of like ice skating or rollerblading. One foot pushes as the other foot glides forward, right? Your arms are like that. Your kick is keeping you moving forward. Now your arms are pulling as the other one pushes forward to glide. So you're kind of always extending your hands in opposite directions as much as you can. That'll allow your body to stay balanced in the water. So freestyle swimming is the most efficient way to swim in the water. It's the most common way and it's the fastest way. It's often used for training for longer distances by triathletes, by long distance swimmers, and even the average lap swimmer. If you watch the Olympics, you'll notice that the freestyle swimming times are always the fastest times of any of the four strokes. How's it going guys? Johnny Rocket here with a video for backstroke, the backstroke swimming technique. What is it? How do you do it? Backstroke was invented in the 1930s as a spin-off of freestyle, trying to do the same arm movements but on your back. It's a pretty efficient stroking style because it's like walking. It's a long axis stroke, which means your body rotates on an axis that goes from your head to the bottom of your feet. Your body rotates side to side like the earth on its axis. But with that being the case, it's a very easy stroke to do. It's one arm at a time, one leg at a time, like you're walking, because that's natural for humans. Butterfly and brush stroke are a lot harder to do. They're less efficient because it's like hopping as transportation versus walking. Walking is much easier to do for us as humans. So backstroke is an easy stroke for us to do. The other reason I think it's easy is because you get to be breathe the entire time. Your face is out of the water, you're breathing, it's easy. However, some people still don't like the stroke and that's okay. It's, it's different strokes for different folks is saying for a reason. If you're not someone who likes backstroke, that's okay. It might make you uncomfortable might make you nauseous, you might sink, you just, maybe your body just doesn't do well with that kind of technique. Sometimes people find it easier to just keep their arms by their side and, and under the water paddling and kicking on their back. That's fine too. I actually teach that step to beginners before they learn the stroke of backstroke. But like every other stroke in swimming, the backstroke has three components to it. The head position, the pull or the arms, and the kick, the legs. We'll start with the head position. When you're on your back, everything's the opposite as when you're on your belly. So when you're swimming freestyle, your chin should be down. But when you're on your back, your chin should be up and it should be a little bit higher than your forehead. A little bit of water might trickle over your forehead. That's a good thing. If it starts to trickle over your eyes, over your goggles, you should lift your face up just a little bit in the water, like half an inch. Not much. Don't lift your head out of the water. Just lift your face out of the water. Your head should remain completely still as your body works around it. So even as your arms are rotating, don't let your head start following your arms side to side. Keep your body straight by keeping your head still. And don't forget to breathe. You're on your back. I know it sounds simple and silly, but a lot of people do forget to breathe because when they're in water, they're just always afraid of water going in their mouth or up their nose. So they just start holding it. And that's, a, that's not necessarily a good thing. You want to breathe. So remember to breathe on your back. The second component to backstroke are the arms. Now the arms have four steps to them, four steps to successful backstroke arms. Step one, big tall arms. You want your hand to come straight up into the air above your body. It might rotate your body onto the other side a little bit. That's okay. Get it up as high as you can. Don't try to swim this flat. Let your body rotate just a little bit to bring that hand up higher. Now, a lot of people out there are paranoid about other coaches uh, not mentioning the whole thumb out pinky in first. I've even had a couple of comments on my own videos. You never mentioned the thumb out pinky in. Well, that was very popular a long time ago. Now we've kind of found if you just throw your hand backwards, it's gonna land in the water pinky in, and that's the more important part anyways. It doesn't matter if your pinky comes out of the water first. Thumb out, pinky out first doesn't matter anymore. We realize it doesn't matter. So just bring your hand up and throw it back. Your pinky will land in the water first, and that's the more important part anyways, the pinky landing in the water first. If you try to throw your hand back and your thumb lands in the water first, now you're in a very awkward position. It's not gonna be easy to switch your palm and twist quickly for an effective pull. So if you want to bring your thumb out first, that's fine. If you think that makes you come out higher, that's great. I just tell people big tall arms. Step number two to the successful backstroke arms is reach. Now I like to get an emphasis on the word reach because it's not just reaching back for water, it's reaching back for as much water as you can get behind your head. Some people might over rotate on this step, 
most people don't. If you over rotate, hopefully there's someone around to tell you this as such, or you can take some a video of yourself, send it over to me and I'll let you know. I like to analyze my subscribers' techniques when they send me their videos. So throw that hand back, let the pinky enter the water first, and reach back for as much water as you can get. Step number three, the pull. I call it strong invisible hands because when your hand enters the water, sometimes it looks a little invisible to people who are watching you from above the surface. It's definitely invisible to anybody watching you from above the surface and if they're in the water, they're barely above the surface. So I strong invisible hands. When your hand enters the water, it shouldn't drop, your elbow shouldn't drop and like hand just kind of dance back down to your side. You should enter the water and pull, get that hand out to the side. A little bit of an elbow bend is good, okay? But it should be with your elbow up and stable, not dropped and leading the way, okay? So strong invisible hand. Like an iceberg, the majority of the work is done under the surface of the water. And that's true for all the strokes. What we see above the water is supposed to be the recovery part of those strokes. Everything that's moving us forward in the water is happening under the surface. The poles, the kicks, it's all being done underneath the water. So when your hand enters the water, you need to have strong invisible hands. Move that water down to your feet. Propel yourself backwards. The fourth and final step to successful backstroke arms are windmill arms. So too many people swim from their pockets just like they do for freestyle and they let their hands come too close to their side and meet for too long down here. You want your arms to always be opposite one another like a windmill. When you pull, they're switching. So now this hand is behind my head, this hand is down by my side. Switch, 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 and keep switching. So the chin is high on the head position, the arms have four steps. Big tall arms, reach back, strong invisible hands, windmill arms. The third and final component to the stroke is the kick. Now the kick is like freestyle is called a flutter kick. However, there's a small difference. The backstroke kick is half as big and twice as fast as the freestyle kick. The freestyle kick also requires a little bit of splashing. Your feet will come above the water a little bit to help speed up the kick. But on your back, you want your feet to remain 98% under the water. You're boiling the water underneath the surface, so it'll look like they're splashing, but they're not really. They're just kicking water up, and maybe the toe breaks the surface, but not the entire foot. Don't bring your foot out of the water and slam it down. You're not kicking water down on your back. You're kicking water up on your back, okay? Flip it up off the tops of your feet. Boom, 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 boom. You're flipping it up to boil it up there. Okay, the most common mistake is swimmers will bend their knees to bring their feet out of the water or to bring their legs out of the water and then like push the water down. You don't wanna be pushing the water down, not on your back. You wanna be pushing the water up. You wanna be kicking the water up. So don't bring your knee out and slam your leg down. Rather, use your, your leg like it's a whip and just create energy from up here, maybe somewhere in your abdomen, your core, your hip flexor, your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, and fling that foot up to the surface, fling those toes up to the surface and watch the water boil. It's very satisfying. Make sure that you have a tight, fast kick. Don't let your legs get too big and sloppy because then it'll make the whole stroke a little bit too sloppy and imbalanced. If you can keep a tight, fast kick, everything else will tighten up. Your body line will tighten up. You'll have better balance in the water. You'll have more control. You'll feel a lot smoother as well. How's it going guys? Johnny Rocket here teaching you about breaststroke. What is breaststroke swimming? What is the breaststroke stroke? How did it originate? Well, it's actually the oldest stroke known to our human history. It's the original stroke, the very first stroke ever invented. It is kind of easy to do because everything stays underwater except the head and the breath. So many people find it relaxing, easy to do. It's not as efficient as freestyle, but it is easy to do. It's a lot like how a frog swims. So many people call it the frog stroke. Like every other stroke, there are three components to breaststroke. The head position, or the breath, the pull, the arms, and the kick, the legs. We're gonna start with the pull. When you pull in breaststroke, you want your hands to start in front of you, just like they do for freestyle. But for breaststroke, you want your hands to touch. Thumbs might be touching, four fingers might be touching with your thumbs tucked underneath. It doesn't matter. Some people prefer to pray. I just don't really recommend going back into a streamline every single time if that's what you've been doing. This is plenty. 
the first thing you do is pull out to the side just a little bit, not much, shoulder width apart, maybe. You're making like the Y in the YMCA dance, okay? You pull out here and then you're gonna turn your hands inward and scoop the water in like you're scooping a bowl of ice cream in front of your face and then shoot your hands forward together in the praying position. Once they get out there, then they can neutralize again to the starting position. Y, scoop, shoot. Pull, scoop, shoot. Pull, scoop, shoot. The most common mistake beginners will make when pulling in breaststroke is they will pull too big, too wide. If you pull behind your shoulders, likely you're gonna bring your hands up underneath your belly button which might go past your hips, and that's a disqualification. It's also just super inefficient. You're gonna end up pulling up too high and then sinking down too low as a result. You wanna stay at the surface of the water, so keep the pulls small and insignificant. Keep them out of the way. Breaststroke is a short axis stroke, which means your body rotates on an axis that goes from hip to hip across your body. So when you swim breaststroke like this, the primary source of power comes from your legs. Therefore, when it comes to the pull, I like to say, keep it out of the way. Keep it insignificant. Teeny tiny baby scoops out in front to start. Since most people have a problem with that, I'll usually just tell them to lock their thumbs and they'll just kick for months. They'll just do the kick, keeping their arms out in front, helping them rebalance their body back. Because when it's a short, or it's, yeah, when it's a short axis stroke, you want your body to be balanced a little bit farther back. You don't want to be tipping forward necessarily. Okay, so keep your body back. Pull, scoop, shoot. Keep it all in front of your head. Pull, scoop, shoot. The second component we're going to talk about in breaststroke is the breath or the head position. The head position, when it's not breathing, should be slightly below your arm. You want your head to be slightly below your arms as you glide. Now your arms would be fully extended, but I'm trying not to crush the microphone here and, and ruin the audio. But your arms would be fully extended with your head below them. Your arms would be squeezing your head. When you breathe, start your breath as soon as you start your pull. So the moment your hands separate, that's when the head starts to lift as well. Boom, right there. In the water, glide, and it happens again. They're like in sync with one another. Boom, breathe, pull at the same time. Hands go forward, face goes down, same time. Breathe, shoot. Breathe, shoot. Breathe, shoot. Like any stroke you're doing, you want to be able to breathe continuously, no holding your breath. So when you're up here, you should be inhaling. And when your face goes back down in the water for the glide, you should be exhaling. The third and final component of breaststroke is the kick or your legs. The kick has three steps to it, heels up, Toes out to the side, kick back. Now, you don't want your feet to splash any water when doing breaststroke. If they come above the surface and splash, it would be a disqualification and it's less efficient. Like I said earlier, your pull and your kick, everything remains underwater in breaststroke except for the breath. So bring your heels up to your rear end, but you might have to bend your knees down into the water a little bit so that you don't bring your heels up out of the water. Then when they go out to the side, they're still underwater. The propulsion is when they squeeze together. Finish your kick all the way till your heels touch or your feet touch. Your feet on breaststroke should be flexed. It's the only kick in competitive swimming, the only kick in all four strokes where your feet are flexed instead of loose and floppy, okay? So your feet are flexed, which means you might have to practice walking on your heels for a while with your toes off the ground. That's the best way to practice flexing your feet. Not only are your feet gonna be flexed, but they're also going to be pulled out sideways a little bit. So if you're walking around on your heels to practice the breaststroke kick, you would pull your toes up to get them off the ground and then you would turn them out to the side a little bit. You'll find your knees kind of go out to the side a little bit too. Be careful, it's not very stable. It might, you might tip over. 
but your feet will be flexed on step one when your heels come up. They'll be flexed on step two when your toes turn out to the side and they'll be flexed on step three as you kick back. At the very end, they might point or they might just re resume a, a loose, relaxed, neutral position, but your feet are flexed for 90% of the kick. Now let's talk about the timing of it all. When do you breathe, pull versus kicking? Like I mentioned um, during the pull and the breath, you're gonna breathe and pull at the same time, but as your hands come are coming into this praying position, that's usually when your heels are also coming up to your rear end. So you're pulling and bringing everything up like you're in a tight little ball here, and then you're going to explode forward into the glide. The kick is the propulsion. It's where the most power comes from. So when you shoot your hands forward, that's when you're kicking. You don't want to shoot your hands all the way forward and then do the kick. You kind of lost a little bit of that momentum from the, from the shoot. Rather, you want to be in this compact position ready to explode forward. So the kick is happening and it doesn't need to be a fast kick. Some people try this technique and then I notice they're just rushing their kick. It doesn't have to be a fast kick. It's just here at the same time as the shoot, all right? At that point, you wanna glide. It's the number one com most common mistake beginners make is they don't glide. They'll just swim breaststroke like this till they get a headache. You need to glide. It's like spotting yourself when you're spinning. You need to glide. Push your hands forward, finish the kick, and glide here, one rocket, two rockets, or whatever your name might be, one Johnny, two Johnny. Pull, breathe. Kick, glide, one rocket, two rocket. Pull, breathe, kick, glide, one rocket, two rocket. If you're having a hard time gliding, start with three. When I teach swimmers, I start with three rockets, then we move down to two rockets, and then for my competitive swimmers, I let them go down to one rocket. How's it going guys? Johnny Rocket here with another video for butterfly technique, the butterfly swimming stroke. What is the butterfly stroke? Well, butterfly was invented in the late 1930s as a spin-off of breaststroke. They started noticing, coaches were noticing that swimmers were faster doing the breaststroke when they recovered with their arms out of the water instead of shooting them forward underwater. So because the butterfly stroke evolved with arms out of the water, it also started with a breaststroke kick, which is why it's called butterfly. It used to look more like a butterfly than it does now, which is a dolphin. It's now become more of a dolphin stroke. So the arms look like butterfly wings, sure, but the kick is now a dolphin kick. Your legs stay together like they're a dolphin tail or a mermaid tail. So you're kind of like hopping in the water, right? And because of that, butterfly is another short axis stroke, just like breaststroke, which means your body's gonna rotate on an axis that goes across your hips. So you're gonna be rotating up and down instead of side to side like freestyle or backstroke. And because butterfly is a short axis stroke, it's inefficient. It makes it harder. It's like hopping around for transportation rather than walking. Well, we as humans, we prefer to walk. Hopping it would get tiring so fast. So just remember, if you've heard butterfly is the hardest stroke or it's an awful stroke, I'm trying to change the narrative a little bit by saying butterfly is just the most inefficient stroke, which means it's going to require more energy to do it well. Okay, but that doesn't mean it can't be done to an easier degree than what you're currently experiencing. I am going to teach you how to do it the most effective way so that it becomes easier for you. Well, like every stroke, butterfly has three components to it. The head position or the breath, the pull, the arms, and the kick, the legs. We're gonna talk with, about the pull first. When you pull in butterfly, your arms will start out here in the superhero position. Now, this is also where they start for freestyle. For breaststroke, we start with them touching, but for butterfly and freestyle, we start with them in the superhero position. When you pull, you pull both arms together at the same time underneath your body, underneath the surface. Once you get down to your belly, you're gonna wanna sweep out to the side. Don't push all the way through, because if you do that, it's gonna be really hard to get your arms up out of the water and back around and forward. So just sweep out here by your hips or your belly button so that when you create momentum, 
it throws your hands forward naturally on their own. You don't really have to do much more effort, okay? That's gonna be one of the best pieces of advice you can take here is sweep out early because a lot of people are talking about how hard butterfly is and I watch them just dragging their arms up out of the water. Sweep out early and you'll find yourself creating momentum that flings your arms forward. The above water portion of the stroke is technically the recovery part of the stroke, but most of you guys would think the exact opposite. When your arms are above the water, that's probably when it's the hardest for you. You're not loving the stroke. You're not even loving life at that point. But if it's a recovery part of the stroke, how on earth do we make it as such? Well, I kind of already gave you that answer and that is to sweep your hands out early. If you aggressively push your hands out to the side and whip them out to the side, there will be momentum created and because of the way our human body is created, the anatomy of our body, your, our shoulders roll forward. So your hands, if you sw swing them out to the side, they're not going to go backwards, they're going to go forwards. Okay. So create momentum that the, so that the above water portion of the stroke can be recovery. It, you don't have to try hard anymore. Pull hard, sweep out hard, and then let the hands drift back up to the starting position. Superhero. Now there is a common misconception out there about butterfly and how it's like a two-armed freestyle stroke. I would recommend against thinking of it that way only because now freestyle has so many finer points that make it unique that it's not necessarily a double arm freestyle stroke anymore. Butterfly is not double arm freestyle. That might be a very basic way to teach someone in the military or something. Those guys have a lot of muscle. Maybe they just need to be uh, grunting through it. But the best way to swim butterfly is to pull underneath your body with your hands kind of close. You're kind of making like a triangle here. All right. So you're pulling your arms underneath here, kind of making like a trapezoid, and then you sweep them out to the side. They'll fly forward on their own. It's not necessarily a freestyle stroke because your arms are fully extended out to the side. Usually your wrists are pointing forward or your thumbs are pointing forward. You should not have your palms pointing forward. Okay. It's either the back of your hands or your thumbs. And then when they land in the water, they're going to rest out in the water. You don't want to jam them out front. You want them to rest out in front. Pull, sweep, rest. Pull, sweep, rest. When your arms are flying out to the side and they're above the water, they shouldn't be more than six inches above the surface. If they're like a foot above the surface of the water, you're wasting too much energy using your shoulders to pinch back your arms. The second component to the butterfly stroke we'll talk about is the breath. Like breaststroke, you're gonna start your breath when you start your pull and you're gonna breathe in front of you. Remember, freestyle is the only stroke of the four that you breathe to the side. Butterfly, you breathe in front of you. Start your breath as soon as you start your pull. So the moment your hands have movement, have life to them, that's when you lift your head to breathe, right there. Kind of like you're pulling yourself into the breath. Now, a lot of coaches out there will teach swimmers to breathe every other stroke on butterfly. I don't like that. You need more oxygen. Butterfly is the most inefficient stroke there is, which means you have to work nearly two, three times harder to go the same speed, or you have to put forth more energy just to go the same distance. So just breathe every single stroke on butterfly. Pull yourself into the breath, make the breath part of your technique. Pull yourself into the breath, put your head back down as your arms swing around. The head position on butterfly when you're not breathing should be like breaststroke, below your arms. You're not going to be pinching your head anymore. You might be, but your arms are in superhero and they're fully extended out front. Your head is still going to be below your arms. Lift it to breathe by pushing your face forward. Don't lift up your head, but rather push your face forward and then drop your head back into the water. The third and final component to the butterfly stroke is the kick or the legs. I mentioned a moment ago that your legs are now a dolphin tail. They're not doing the breaststroke kick anymore like they used to. It's a dolphin kick. Now, your legs don't have to be glued together, but they have to kick together. They have to kick at the same time. They have to work in tandem with one another. So an up kick and a down kick is important in butterfly. Most people just focus on the down kick. Make sure you have a strong down kick and a strong up kick. Your feet will come out of the water on butterfly. Probably about half your foot will come out of the water, maybe your ankle, and then you can slam them back down to get a deeper kick. 
Okay, bend your knees a lot too to snap the butterfly kick. Too many coaches teach kids and adults to keep their legs straight on butterfly. Butterfly, you would wanna bend your knees to get more of a good snap, like a whip out of your kick. It also traps water that's coming underneath your body, which boosts your body up higher in the surface of the water. It's the way Michael Phelps swims butterfly. He bends his knees a little bit deeper into the water. There are two kicks per pole in butterfly. Most people will do one kick with their arms out, in front and one kick with their hands exiting out back. One with their hands out front, one with their hands out back. One, 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 one. And that would be two kicks per stroke, right? As a beginner, I like to teach people to do both kicks with their hands in front because sometimes you'll sneak in a third one as your hands exit and that's okay. You're actually allowed as many kicks as you want per stroke these days. So I'd like a third kick in many of my beginners. I like a third kick in most of my beginners, but you're only gonna get that third kick by focusing on doing two kicks with your hands out front. Boom, boom. That also helps people not just start swimming butterfly from their pockets where they keep getting trapped and frustrated. If you're keeping your hands out front for the two kicks, you'll find you're way more balanced and the entire stroke is a lot easier to do. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you found this video helpful, splash that like button, subscribe to the channel for free, and consider becoming a member today. Check out the merch over on our digital store and follow us over on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, and Facebook for shorter clips and tips throughout the week. If you want to get in contact with me directly, you can text or email me right here. If you want your own private swim lessons in person or online, head over to our website and sign up today. Now let's get ready to rock it.